Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick look at one of the new quads from Darwin FPV. Now you would be forgiven when you look at this for thinking, hang on a minute, that looks more like a speedy beam model. And it kind of does. And that is a compliment in my humble opinion. Speedy beam is some really good stuff. Now Darwin FPV have been around for a while. I've done loads of videos on their stuff, but this is starting to feel like a very grown up quad. This is the Baby Ape 3 Pro. This one has the GPS in it for return to home. Available in lots of different versions. This one's an analog setup, uh, but there's absolutely loads of room in here. I don't know if you can actually see through that for you to put your own FPV gear in it. 4S, uh, nice and compact, flies beautifully. And I thought I'd just kind of go through the usual stuff in here and uh, potentially do something nice at the end. Now, this new Baby Ape. 3 Pro is part of a series. It has three models in it. There's a two inch mini, three inch standard, and a three and a half inch Pro, which this is. They all feature lightweight designs. There's quite a lot of frame here, but it doesn't weigh much at all. And it's also very much sticking to the design philosophy that Darwin FPV have had right from the very beginning, which is about trying to give you an awful lot for your money. Key features on this thing is that the entire thing is going to weigh under 250 grams. If that's important to you, it'll just slip in your pocket and kind of fly very much like a five inch model. It starts only $129.99. That's cheap compared to models of a similar spec. But more importantly, they do make things like spare parts available. So batteries, motors and frames cost an awful lot less than other five inch quads, cutting down a lot of the expense when you inevitably crash it. The motors on this are new Bling 1504 motors paired with 3525 HQ prop propellers and give a nice easy flying style balancing the power and the battery life the responsiveness is lovely and it handles really nicely so it's great if you're a beginner and maybe want to move off whoops or those kind of models into something a little bit more aggressive this would be a great model for that but also if you are a accomplished quad pilot and you just want something a little bit more compact also if you're going to pay hd bits and pieces in here with the gps so there's a chance of getting all that stuff back if you lose your video this is an option carbon fiber body throughout and lots of different options depending on what you're looking for on the website and nicely that is being delivered all built ready to go unlike some quad manufacturers at the moment that seem to be reluctant to ship pre-built drones from china Specs on this analog version, uh, the camera is a Caddx Ant at the front. I'll show you the footage in a minute. I'm not a fan of the Caddx Ant. I don't like it as a camera, and you'll see why. The VTX is a Darwin 5.8 gig, 1.2 watt VTX, but has lots of different power settings that you can set up through Betaflight. VTX antenna is a Darwin FPV 5.8G quantum antenna. The flight controller in here is a Darwin FPV F35 30 amp AM32 all in one unit. The receiver, if it's PMP, it comes without receiver. If it's BNF, bind and fly, which this one is, it comes with a Darwin FPV cement express LRS. 2.4 gig receiver gps is an m1018 gps branded as darwin fpv and again the motors on this thing are darwin fpv bling 1504 4000 kv motors with hq prop with t 3.5 by 2.5 by three bladed propellers structure is a wide x wheelbase is about 157 millimeters arm thickness is three millimeters so you're gonna have to work hard to break those they're claiming a top speed of about 130 kilometers an hour and the battery life of eight to 10 minutes. And that's because it's really built for these batteries, these 4S 850 milliamp hour 70C XT30 based batteries. And there's also a charging adapter thing that comes with these as well. We'll talk a little bit more about the batteries in a moment. So in Beast Flight Configurator, there is already something in the data flash, which means it has been checked from the factory. So that QC sticker on the box actually means something. Ports are set like this. So Smart Audio is set on UART 7 for the VTX. Everything else looks pretty standard. There is some ESC telemetry as well. Um, Beta Flight 4.5 configuration, 8K gyro and PID loop frequency. CPU load is 35%. This is a 
half decent processor on here that's coping with that beautifully air modes on gps is on on screen displays on nothing surprising here uh the led strip is also on as well fail safe is set to drop i would set that to gps rescue that's the only thing in here that i found that was a bit weird why on earth would you do it that way because that's kind of the whole point of having the gps surely don't forget though to set your hover throttle correctly for how you're flying it Pit tuning looks like this. Uh, dump and diff are down below if you want to go and have a look. It's set up to be uh, a very stable, relaxing flyer. Receiver is set to CRSF via a UART. Um, I did try and get it to bind using the bind receiver button at the bottom. Ended up just adding a bind phrase, just powering the quad and leaving it for uh, 60 seconds. You're going to need to come in the modes and get that all sorted. GPS is set up really nicely and outside actually got a lock very quickly in kind of sub a minute from a cold start which is great on-screen display is also going to need a little bit of work it's not how i would have it laid out uh, but again that's a very personal thing and again dump and diff are below so a quick little comment about this battery that has come on this. Again, these are Darwin FPV branded 850s. The unusual thing is that there's no balance connector, well, lead, but there is a balance connector at the back and there's also a little extension lead as well. Now in the box, you do get with the battery, those two leads that you can just plug in and that will then allow you to plug them into a standard charger. But there is also this adapter here that you can plug in to charge multiple batteries at the same time nicely done 3d printed case just plug the pieces in here and then you can plug a whole row of batteries into your battery charger and charge them at the same time protected by fuses but you know this is an interesting way to do it just make sure you don't lose these cables otherwise using a traditional charger is going to be a real pain in the butt so how does it fly well the actual flying is really really good but as you can see here the image from that cadix and camera is just really mushy i'm getting quite a bit of breakup as well and just the the image particularly i've actually been flying a hd quad before this which was definitely the wrong way around to do it is is just horrid I personally, if I was going to buy the analog version, would treat myself to a very different camera. However, there is tons of room at the back of this for you to install your own gear. So maybe if you have a VTX that you really love and a camera that you like, get one without any HD or analog FPV gear in it and install your own stuff, because I think that would probably give you a much better solution. I know they're trying to keep the cost down here, but in my experience with the Cadix Ant, it always looks like this. And even on a beautiful, bright, sunny, crisp morning like I'm flying here, it just looks absolutely horrible but with the actual fpv stuff out the way how does it fly outside of that absolutely brilliantly it's really fun to fly very responsive very stable within moments i forgot it was only kind of a three and a half inch quad and was just hooting it around like it was a five inch quad and just had a whale of a time it's pulling a reasonable amount of current about 3.7 amps um, in spirited flying so that battery isn't going to last you forever but if you're more conservative with how you are using the throttle then you can probably get away with a little bit longer flight time there's tons of power here to get in and out of trouble so if you want to fly it like you stole it that's absolutely an option so there is an awful lot to like about this little quad from Darwin FPV. If someone had handed me this, I could have easily mistaken it for a Speedy B quad and a few of my friends actually have. And that's a very good thing. This is a much more grown up, finished, professional looking quad than some of the smaller units they had in their very early days. 4S power on this pocket size quad means that this is an absolute blast to fly and you don't sacrifice performance even though you're going down to a smaller form factor do you like the fact that this is an f7 based all in one unit too that's an excellent choice it does mean that we have the ability to have 8k pid and gyro frequencies and that the cpu isn't going to break into a sweat when you do it i do like the frame design it's elegant and strong with 
tons of space despite its relatively compact size. One of the big benefits is that we have lots of room at the back here for HDFPV systems, if that's what you want to do. And I would probably swap this out for HDFPV, but more about that in a moment. The challenge, of course, is that it's really designed around these very specific batteries that go in between. You could absolutely fit other batteries without a problem at all, but there is this channel on the top that's kind of built for these 850 milliamp hour forest batteries from Darwin FPV. Do love the fact we have a GPS in here. I wish more of these size quads actually did. It means that we have the beta flight rescue mode, which, you know, most of the time might bring it back in your direction if something bad happens, but it's far better than having nothing at all. And if you do start to put HD FPV systems in a little quad like this, you do want a decent chance of getting it back if something happens to the FPV image. Lots of detail and support on the website for this as well. And this is one of the other things that I really like Darwin FPV for. There are CLI downloads, STL files to download and print, spares availability. They're definitely trying to make it so that when you buy one of these things, you can continue to fix and upgrade it rather than outgrow it and stick it in the spares pile. Only a couple of things to be aware of, really. First of all is that obviously there's no action camera mounting option in the box you can easily probably design and print your own if you really wanted that no spare props in the box as well so when you break them that's going to be the end of the flying until you can get some spares if you were going to order one of these i would order yourself a spare set of props i wish there was a non dgi hd option too something like the avatar or ascent system would be great if i was going hd fpv i would order it without any FPV gear in it and then just put the HD system in of my choice. There's loads of UARTs on the all-in-one and it's F7 based so that should be a pretty easy thing to set up. GPS isn't powered from the USB sadly, um, it is powered from the battery so if you want to test your GPS is working and check that all in configurator you are going to have to plug a battery in. I do wish more of these flight controllers passed the 5 volts from the USB up into the GPS as well as the receiver because the receiver is powered which is good but also power the GPS just for that extra little bit of safety on the bench when you're checking things out you can make sure the GPS locks or get a lock at home before you go to the field which will speed up the lock when you actually get there. Modes and on-screen display will need a tweak in the standard setup. Also turn on return to home as the fail-safe setting. And don't lose the cables for the unusual battery if you're going to use the Darwin FPV ones. Keep those in a very safe place. So, I kind of hinted at the beginning that there was something at the end. So for those of you that have stayed to the very end, thank you for watching my content. I hope you're having a fantastic festive season and that Christmas Day was a blast. I'm releasing this video on Boxing Day because I kind of want to do a giveaway. So thank you so much for sticking with it. And I'm going to give away this specific quad. So rather than put the Ascent system in it from Cadix, which is what I was going to do, I've got another quad coming that I'm going to do that with and make some videos on. This needs to go to a home where somebody is going to love it and play with it and just have a blast. So I'm doing a giveaway. Standard stuff. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment down below, and if you're not already subscribed, make sure you are subscribed. A lot of people who watch my videos regularly don't hit the subscribe button, and it actually makes a big difference to the channel. I know we always say that, but it genuinely does. Now, to make sure that I'm going to pick a winner of somebody that's actually stayed to the very end and just not left a random comment, include the secret phrase, Merry Christmas and best wishes for 2026. I will use that phrase to pick the winner in a couple of days. You know what? Let's actually do it on New Year's Day. So I'll release that on New Year's Day and then somebody can have a new little present to start off the year. Thanks again for watching my content over the previous year. I did make a comment about this yesterday in my Christmas Day video. Thank you to everybody that engages with my content and a big thank you to all my Patreons. Best of luck to everybody and I will pull the names out of the hat on New Year's Day. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.